Hello, welcome to the programme. Our top story, Italy has suffered another sharp, sharp spike in deaths from coronavirus a day after putting a quarter of its population, that's 16 million people, under lockdown. 366 people are now known to have died from the virus, an increase of 133 from Saturday. This makes it the country with the highest official death toll outside China. More than 7,000 infections have been confirmed. The lockdown includes the entire Lombardy region, where 267 of the deaths were recorded. So they are mainly concentrated in that region. It's home to 10 million people and the financial capital Milan. No one can actually move in or out of the area now. The lockdown has also been imposed on 14 other provinces, including Venice, affecting another 6 million people there. Those restrictions are set to remain until early April. Well, Austria's chancellor has been speaking out, saying that it's only a matter of time before more European countries adopt the same aggressive measures as Italy. Sonia Giego has more. In Padua, in northern Italy, people rushed to the train station, desperate to leave the city before it was put into lockdown. I read two hours ago that they may be putting out an urgent decree putting Padua in the red zone. And because I'd like to return down south to my relatives, I decided to go earlier. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has signed a decree to impose an unprecedented large-scale quarantine in the Lombardy region, home to 10 million people, to limit the spread of COVID-19. Now we have restrictive measures for a much wider area, because it wasn't making any sense to seal off small red zones while the infections have spread all over Lombardy and in the provinces we listed. This comes after Italy reported more than 1,200 new infections in one day. There's going to be uh, many things that are going to be closed, like gyms, cultural centres, um, all, all sorts of areas where people uh, get together in large groups. Restaurants and bars, however, appear. Uh, it appears they will be kept open. The head of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis, who's fighting a cold, has cancelled public appearances. He delivered his regular Sunday prayer to crowds at the Vatican by livestream. And the leader of one of Italy's two ruling parties announced on Saturday that he has coronavirus. Italy is the worst affected country in Europe, but France, Germany and the Netherlands have all reported a rise in the number of cases while Malta, Slovakia and Serbia have confirmed their first infections. Well, for more on what's happening, not just in Italy, in Europe, uh, Sonia is with me now. So speaking about uh, quite a significant jump in the death toll to 366, did the government release any more information about these figures? Well, what we can uh, see from this is that the uh, incidents of these have proved to be... Uh, Quite having, quite having quite a high fatality rate in the affected zone. Also noticing that the actual number of cases itself has also jumped. On Saturday, uh, we, there were 5,883 uh, 5, confirmed cases of coronavirus in Italy. Uh, on Sunday, that's jumped up to uh, more than 7,370 cases. That's an enormous number. Uh, so really what you are seeing is the authorities struggling mm. to really try and contain this as much as possible uh, and, and in effect trying to uh, provide these no-go areas and these lockdowns is a way of not necessarily sort of um, trying to contain it which for some people is too late but also trying to slow the spread as has been attempted to have been done in, in the areas in China which have been uh, predominantly affected by that. It's very important that not just the death toll is jumping but crucially the infection rate is on the rise. We're also seeing an in increasing number of cases in other parts of Europe in, in anticipation that we could see similar tough measures being implemented elsewhere. That's right. Um, in France, for example, uh, again, numbers have jumped. You now have 1,126 confirmed cases and 19 deaths which have been confirmed from that as well. Now, the virus, the coronavirus, novel corona coronavirus, has infected every single region of France. In particular, now that you've got new measures which are going to be introduced there as well, closing schools, which will be rolled out from Monday. Germany, again, we've seen a spike in numbers there, 795. Uh, whilst there were 
weren't any deaths that were uh, reported in the country. One German national has been reported as having died from coronavirus whilst he was on holiday in Egypt. So it's really sort of you're seeing those numbers coming up there. Uh, no one has ruled out that those similar lockdown measures that have been seen in Italy uh, over this weekend will will be put in place elsewhere. It looks likely that they may be putting in those quarantine measures uh, just simply once again to stem uh, the flow of, of, of that spread rather than to sort of rule it out completely because it seems that already the spreadability of mm. coronavirus is proving to be highly. Thank you very much, Sonia. Sonia Gago. Uh, and of course, as we're hearing there, the coronavirus is having a, a significant and disruptive impact on life in Italy. And earlier we spoke to Francesca Bori, an Italian journalist currently based in Alzano, Lombardo, one of the worst affected areas in Italy that's uh, currently under lockdown. And she's saying that hospitals in the region have been inundated to the point where sick residents are being told to stay at home. Now it's, uh, it's Sunday afternoon. And this is the main square of, of the town. It's uh, about 13,000 people. And it's completely, it's the reddest zone of Italy's red zone. Uh, in the last three days, there were 16 dead. And basically, everybody got infected. Everybody. Because they, they are already sick. And so they stay at home because there are no more available beds in hospitals. And actually, the current hospital which serve uh, about 500,000 people in all the area, not only, of course, in this little town, uh, doctors got infected. So there are no more intensive care beds available. And so basically, Italians are asked to stay at home uh, when they get fever. Let's say that the front line is the current, I mean, is the, is the pharmacy. Uh, if you call, uh, you know, in Italy, there is a system of local doctors so this town has 10 local doctors. We call them family doctors. And so actually you are asked to call your family doctor, but the family doctor can't visit you at home. It's forbidden now. Uh, and so basically just by phone, they can tell you, try to understand if you got infected or not, because of course you can get, you know, fever, just mm. a normal flu. Well, Saudi Arabia has placed one of its eastern regions under lockdown because of the outbreak. State media is saying that most public and private sector work is being suspended. In Atif, this is the area that we're talking about, but vital services nonetheless will keep running in the region. Commercial supplies will continue to be delivered to the area with protective measures to keep people safe. Iran is the hardest hit country, not just in the Middle East, but in the world. It's reported a sharp increase in infections on Sunday, saying that more than 6,500 people have the virus and 194 have died. Zain Basravi is in Tehran for us, where he says the government is hopeful the outbreak will soon be under some control. Another massive spike in the number of coronavirus-related deaths. 49 in the last 24 hours, bringing the total death toll closer and closer to 200. Specifically, 194 people have died of the coronavirus since the outbreak was made public in Iran. 743 new cases overall in the last 24 hours. Another large jump, 6,566 is the total number of cases in this country. Now, the highest level was in Khum when this outbreak began. It is now in Tehran, in Tehran province, in and around the capital of the country. During the health ministry briefing earlier today, the uh, spokesman did say that the trend of the total number of cases does seem to be going down, which is a positive step. He also said the spike seen in the death toll, the ongoing cases that we see today, is a result of infections that have happened over the course of the last week to 10 days. So he said if people take the precautionary measures that the government is prescribing seriously, then within the next two weeks or so, they will begin to see the results, they will begin to see the circumstances improve, and they will begin to see the overall number of cases to go down. And that is really the government's goal here, to stop the spread, to be able to contain it, so as to be able to have confidence both in... ...many borders and uh, uh, airports that have been closed to the international community since this outbreak began. 
Well, now to the United States. A top health official there has admitted there were missteps that delayed virus testing. Disease expert Anthony Fauci says the government might consider shutting down sections of the country hit hardest by the virus. The American military is restricting travel to and from Italy and South Korea, where there have been large outbreaks. Despite the concerns, President Trump says he will continue to hold political rallies. Well, so let's get the latest from Patty Colhane, who's live in Washington. And so, obviously, concern about sections of the country possibly being shut down and then also this delay in testing. Exactly. The Washington state governor says that that is something that they are considering. He didn't seem like it was imminent. Uh, but obviously, what, looking across the globe, that is something that Americans have been told to prepare for as a possibility. Uh, we have a new number now, 469 cases in the United States. And I want to point out, that is not coming from the federal government. This is a website that Johns Hopkins, the hospital, is running. Uh, information from the federal government has been really hard to get. In the past, the Centers for Disease Control would tell people how many people have been tested. They are not doing that this time. And part of the reason could be because they made really big mistakes with this test. At least that's what critics are saying. Uh, they came up with the test. They held a press conference. They bragged about how quickly they did it. They sent it out to some state labs. Turns out the test didn't work. So they took a couple more weeks. In the same time, they weren't letting private companies. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration wasn't letting private companies or uh, hospitals or colleges come up with their own tests. So they've changed that in the last couple of days. And we're seeing really mixed messages. We saw the vice president, who's leading the effort, come out and say, there simply aren't enough tests for those that are needed. And then 24 hours later, the president came out and said, everybody who wants a test gets a test. And he's continuing to do that. He's uh, defending his actions on Twitter, uh, basically calling it uh, perfectly coordinated and fine-tuned. Uh, but that's not exactly what we're hearing from the very respected head of the National Institutes of Health, Dr. Anthony Fauci. The tests are out there. There was a misstep early on with regard to the test, namely a, a technical difficulty. But right now, about 1.1 million tests are out there now. There'll be an additional about 640,000 on, let's say, Monday, and then at least another 4 million, particularly now that we're engaging the private sector. Now, when you say that, they're out there. If you go to a doctor, it's up to the doctor to order the test. And if that happens, a person should have a test available. But it's no doubt, Chris, you have to be realistic. Early on, there were some missteps that delayed it. Uh, Patty, we've been speaking in this program about the coronavirus really uh, causing a great deal of damage to an already fragile Italian economy. What about concerns of the effect it could have on economic activity there? Well, I think that's part of the question, part of the reason why you see officials really sending these mixed messages because they don't want to see people panic uh, because they are worried about the economy. In America, you have to look at everything through the prism of this is an election year, and that has been the president's main selling point. He says, look at the stock market, look at the economy, look at the jobs numbers. The stock market has been absolutely tanking over the last couple of weeks, so he's no longer talking about the stock market, but we are seeing an issue in these communities. For example, Seattle's been particularly hard hit. So there have been big employers who say, work from home, don't come in. Well, 70 percent of the U.S. economy is based on the service sector. So if those workers aren't going to the office, they're not going to lunch at the nearby cafe, that cafe is experiencing half of their business being gone, and then they have to pay their workers. America is also going to face unique challenges uh, on this front, because unlike most of the developed world, this is not a country that has federal sick time, meaning for most of the low-income workers, if they don't go to work, they don't get paid. They don't get paid sick time. So especially if these are food service workers and they're going to work sick, then they have a pretty strong ability to spread this pretty far and wide. Uh, so that is a concern. Also, this is a country without universal health insurance. 27.5 million people don't have health insurance. They are unlikely to go to a doctor, say, not only am I going to pay a doctor, but I'm going to pay for this rather expensive test. Again, these are low-income people, the vast majority, who simply don't have the disposable income to do that. So this is going to pose very unique challenges for the United States. Thank you very much, Patty Colhane in Washington. Well, it's a slightly